The Wisher. Uh... Speaker, can I thank Leader of the House for announcing well something anyway that we'll look like we'll be doing next week? And can I also welcome the new Sergeant at Arms of Mana a year? And I think we're all on these benches looking very much forward to meeting him and working with him in the future. And it's uncharacteristic of the Leader of the House not to announce today that he's secured his deal and well done, Leader of the House, and to his government for eventually getting something after all this time. The only thing is it's a worse deal than Theresa May that takes Scotland out of the European Union against this national collective will that deprives us of customs union membership, of single market membership, that will stop freedom of movement that our economy depends upon in so many vital sectors. But even when we're all still on the, the Hillary steps, the dark clouds are still there, the mist is still in the air in the shape of the DUP. Because what we've found is that Sherpa Foster has unshackled herself from the, the Prime Minister and is busily descending that mountain as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Speaker, can we have a debate on culinary delicacies? Because the plat de jour for the Leader of the House is his own words. A delicious Northern Irish Brexit jambalaya of choice vocabulary, including impractical, bureaucratic, betrayal of common sense, all washed down by the finest chateau cretinus. Churchill <laughs> may have indeed found his own words very nutritious, but I suspect that the Leader of the House will only get indigestion. Mr Speaker, we'll deal with the whole issue of the Saturday sittings in this subsequent motion, but we do have the conclusion of the Queen's speech in the next few days, and it looks very likely that this is a Queen's speech that might be voted down for the first time since Stanley Baldwin in 1924. And so can I ask the Leader of the House what happens in that situation? Now, he'll obviously tell me that he thinks and hopes it will all get through, but what happens if it does not? We've heard things from the Government that they intend to bring through the Queen's speech bill by bill. If, if that's our intention, I'd like the Leader of the House to outline that to the House today. I know he likes to give his views on these issues, so let's see if he could be actually straightforward with the House today. And lastly, Mr Speaker, the Leader of the House will have seen that at the SNP conference we intend to have an independence referendum yeah. in the course of next year. We have to, as a nation, unshackle ourselves from this whole ugly, disastrous Brexit business, an issue that we wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. And isn't it interesting, in the deal announced today, Northern Ireland will get a differentiated deal when it comes to single market membership, Wales will get what it wants, and the rest of the UK will get what it wants. The only nation that doesn't get what it wanted and when it comes to the European is Scotland. And Mr Speaker, that is not good enough. Uh, uh, Mr Speaker, it's being so cheerful that keeps the Honourable Gentleman going. It's always a pleasure <laughs> to, 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 to listen to him. Um, he mentions the deal. I am pleased to say that this is a really fantastic and exciting deal. I, I, and I'm very, I'm very glad. I, I am very... I am very glad he's given me the opportunity to speak about it, because when I was speaking on behalf of the government on Sunday, I was doing so because I trust the Prime Minister and knew he would get a good deal. But I was supporting it on the basis of trust. Now I know what is in the deal. My trust has been completely justified. It is a really exciting and positive deal. It removes the undemocratic backstop. It is a huge advance for the whole of the United Kingdom. It will ensure that we are one single customs territory. I am aware of the details of the deal. Look, I, I actually have the text of it here. So I am glad to say that I have had... Unlike, unlike, unlike the Honourable Gentleman, I have had the chance to peruse it in detail. I, but I, well, the honourable gentleman says, from a sedentary position, I haven't read it. How do you peruse something without reading it? Does he think I have understood it by extrasensory perception? I tell him he is wrong. It has not come to me through the ether. I have looked at the words on the page, which, in the normal definition, is reading, Mr. Speaker. Perhaps we should have, after this uh, session, um, remedial. Um, education for people to understand the normal use of words in English. 
Um, so, it is a really good, exciting deal that takes out the undemocratic backstop, delivers on what the Prime Minister promised he would do, in 85 days has achieved something that could not be achieved in three years. It is something... It is something... Well, I'm thanking him for giving me credit for it, Mr Speaker, but the credit... <laughs> The credit belongs to my right honourable friend who has achieved this remarkable success in a deal that all of us can support. Every single member who stood on a manifesto saying that they would respect the the, the will of the people in the referendum can support this with confidence. All our socialist friends can support it with confidence because it delivers on the referendum result. It is a really exciting day today in British politics. All Eurosceptics, all my friends who sit where I used to sit, can rally round this great deal. And I hope, I hope that my... Um, now, I hope, I hope my friends in the DUP will also find that what it does for the whole of the United Kingdom yes. is something over which they can have comfort yes. and support. And I understand that our separatist friends don't want anything for the benefit of the whole of the United Kingdom. They are always trying to pick things apart, but they will be shown uh, to be wrong. The, the Honourable Gentleman... The Honourable Gentleman asked me if I would um, at any point have to eat my words. Well, I must say this deal is the Tornado's Rossini of a deal. It is a deal that one can eat with joy and pleasure, and it is the finest culinary delight for me uh, to, to have. Um, and I apologise to the Honourable Gentleman. I didn't pay unduly close attention to the SNP conference, uh, having other things to do um, of slightly more interest. But... <laughs> I mean, it has to be said, almost anything would have been of slightly more interest. But I, I, I don't want. I, and I noticed that the Honourable Gentleman was very pleased to be here early in the week to avoid his leader's speech when he had the opportunity to be in the House of Commons instead. Um, but on the difference between Scotland and Northern Ireland, the difference is absolutely clear, and that is the, the, the Belfast Agreement, the, the Good Friday Agreement, and the fact that there is a land border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, which is the land border uh, with the European Union. So Northern Ireland is unquestionably in a unique position, hence yeah. its difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh,